Lesson eight is gonna be on pure substances. It's also gonna start our matter section. So we're gonna first start with pure substances. We're gonna talk about monatomic versus diatomic. And lastly, we're gonna talk about compounds. There are many possible definitions for matter. In science, matter is the term for any type of material. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Uh, at a minimum, matter requires at least one subatomic particle, although most matter consists of atoms. The word matter is sometimes used to refer to a pure substance. Some things that are not matter, and we're going to be covering them throughout the year, could be things like electromagnetic radiation. That's stuff like gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet radiation, visible light, the stuff you're seeing right now, infrared, microwaves, and also radio waves, which make sound. Also, what's not matter is heat, light, photons, and mental thoughts. Dun, dun, dun. Here's a little classification of what matter is. It's being broken down into pure and mixtures. This video is going to be talking about only the left side, the pure stuff. So pure substance is something that has a definite and constant composition, which means it does not fluctuate in time. Like water is always H2O, it's never HO or H3O. A pure substance can also not be physically separated. It requires some sort of energy through some sort of chemical reaction to make it separate. All pure substances also have a distinct chemical property. Water is a clear liquid. Diamonds are the strongest thing known to man. Table salt is tasty on top of uh, food. On top of on top of food, and sugar is sweet. Pure substances are composed of elements and compounds, and some examples are listed in the purple circle. So names and information for majority of the elements on the periodic table is found on reference table S. It's very, very useful. Remember we said that all elements are pure substances on their own. Uh, elements cannot be broken down, so uh, a one kilogram lump of gold, which is a pure element, contains only gold atoms. Uh, when looking at the elemental symbols, the first letter is always capitalized. If there happens to be a second letter, it will always be lowercase. As you look on the periodic table, you'll notice that many of them are one letter, and some of them require two. You'll... There are some that require three, which are on the very bottom towards 118, but they've actually been changed. You'll also notice that some of them don't actually match up to their English names, and that's because we use their Latin roots. So elements can be broken down into two categories, diatomic and monatomic. So diatomic means there are two of the same element bonded together. So oxygen gas, for instance, is always listed as O2, um, and that's because oxygen is always two atoms of oxygen always combined together. Monatomic atoms, however, are single atoms, not bonded together. So for instance, sodium. Uh, sodium is one of our lovely, lovely monatomic atoms. Most elements on the periodic table are monatomic. There are only seven diatomics. So right now, I'd like it if you guys could take out your reference tables and Find the periodic table. It's towards the back. I want you guys to grab a highlighter, any color preferably. If you don't have a highlighter, maybe a color pencils. And I need you to shade in the following tiles on the periodic table. I need you guys to shade in hydrogen, which is in the top left. And I need you to shade in nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, iodine, and bromine. These guys are found on the far right hand side of the periodic table. After you do that, I would also appreciate it if you either wrote Brinkelhoff or Hofbrinkel, these guys all the way down here, I would like it if you drew, uh, wrote that down on your reference table as well, on the periodic table. Just one of them, pick one. Any one, they're the same thing. What they mean are the diatomic elements, Brinkelhoff, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, which is a mnemonic way of remembering. So, if you ever forget about those diatomics, just keep calm and use Brinkle off. So compounds are made up of two or more chemically combined elements. They're not diatomics. Diatomics are 
bonded of the same kind of element. These are two or more. They have very specific chemical formulas, like water is H2O. Uh, that can never be changed. And since they are chemically combined, the only way to separate them is through chemical separations. So sometimes you're going to be forced to read some of these compounds. We all know that H2O is water, but what is LiCl and Fe2O3? Before we get into that, we have to understand what these numbers are. And those little numbers are called subscripts. The little number after the element indicates how many of that element there are in a compound. I'm pretty sure you can guess that in water there are two hydrogens and one oxygen. In that case, lithium chloride, LiCl, has one lithium and one chloride. You'll also notice in Fe2O3, iron three oxide, you have two irons and three oxygens. The coefficient is the big number that's written out in front. So sometimes you'll see that you have multiple of these uh, compounds. So for the, the first example, there is no coefficient. So we just say there's one H2O. So there's still only two hydrogen and one oxygen. In the second example, however, there's two LiCl, lithium chlorides. So that means there's one lithium chloride, one lithium and one chlorine in that one, but since there's two of them, you're gonna multiply everything by two. Then the last example, there are three iron three oxides or Fe2O3s, which means you're gonna multiply the original amounts of iron and oxygen by three which ends up giving you six iron and nine oxygen atoms. There's also gonna be a time where we have to differentiate between binary and polyatomic compounds. Really simple. Binary, like binary code computer speak, is between zero and one, two different digits. If you ever see a compound that has two capital letters, like NaCl or Fe2O3 or H2O, those are binary compounds. You're going to be using the periodic table to identify those. A polyatomic ion has more than two capital letters. If you see NaCH3COO, which is sodium acetate, or if you see Li2CO3, which is lithium carbonate, or NaCN, which is sodium cyanide, you're going to be using reference table E. We'll be talking about reference table E later on in the year.